to the Mixercist. Hey, Chris, how's it going, man? Going pretty good. What's happening with you, Eric? Oh, you know, a little bit of this and that. Didn't sleep much night, uh, last night, but uh, I don't even remember why. Okay. I don't know. I woke up in a grave. Do you remember the movie The Game? I do. And he wakes up in like this uh, mausoleum, you know, yeah. all messed up. Is that like, that's not a game. That could happen to you. Oh, it could, it could happen to you. It already did happen to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, back it was hard using the, uh, using the transporter to get back, but that's a whole nother story, right? Totally. Yeah. <laughs> well, are you feeling better now? Oh, much, <laughs> much, yeah. Yeah, just quick okay, call, quick call into the evil Zool, and I was uh, fine. Take the, took care of me right away. Well, that's always, that's always <laughs> the answer. <man. laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's roll. So um, this week we're talking about reverb. Reverb. We're talking about reverb that makes it easy to mix, right? Things that just sound good, fit in the mix nice. Yeah. Not too crazy, not so much reverb for an effect, but reverb to create realistic space. So you yes. want to roll first? Sure, man. Realistic right, uh, space simulation. So let me... All right, uh, everybody. Welcome to the Mixer Assist. Yeah. So realistic mix simulation. There's... Um, couple ways to do it within the digital realm generally falls into a few categories you're either trying to uh simulate reflections and that's what a lot of reverbs the majority of reverbs do like the lexicons do that uh you can have ray tracing which is like what the tc reverbs uh, some of them do so another interesting mm -hmm. reverb that uh calculates modes it doesn't deal with reflections at all it tries to avoid reflections it actually does uses resonance there's very few that do that like uh the quantech yardstick did that and uh mm -hmm. the uhe has a plugin called protoverb that we'll get to but and uh what right. else convolution there's convolution reverbs where you take an impulse mm -hmm. and that right. includes uh hrtf right. uh, head related transfer functions which are basically convolution impulses of your two ears at various positions mm -hmm. and that's uh what we're going to do right now because after that very long preamble I have for us. We're going to use that to insert the demon into your mind. <laughs> Straight in. Okay. Which is sick. So in. We, we have before us a plugin called Dear VR Pro, which mm -hmm. is a 3D uh, space. It's not just a reverb, but it's a space simulation unit. So it uses, uh, if you can see here, you got the guy in the middle with a head, right? And here's the mm -hmm. position, and you just drag this where do you want it in the environment. You set the environment up here. It's got a reverb with a tail and reflections. And this would be your direct source. And not only does it uh, change the relation of the direct source to the, to the reverb and the reflections, but it also puts it through these HRTFs, head-related transfer functions. It, and that yeah. it captures the phase difference between the ears, the frequency difference between the ears. It's very realistic, and I will give you an example of it right now. You can move it around in three in three D space. So, ooh, you can go behind the head. Counselor. <laughs> Cape Fear. Counselor? 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 Could you be there? <laughs> That's awesome. So you know, it's like he's right there in the room with me. Yeah, I mean, and, and yeah, actually, guess you guess who's not going to sleep well tonight? You know, I had the set to uh, for speakers. Uh, so uh, that's to sound real good on speakers. There's also a binaural setting that's for headphones proper. Uh, they're, they're both very mm -hmm. similar. The speaker has a thing called crosstalk cancellation, which we don't need mm -hmm. to get into. But you can really get the, not only can you get the, the sense of space and, and move things around in 3D, but you can uh, you could hook this up for, if you're like in, in video game design. Uh, you can hook this mm -hmm. up to 3D goggles. And uh, totally because in the video games, you know, when you move your head, like the sound has to change because you've, the environment didn't change, but your position did. And this this thing will hook right. up to one of those and it'll track it uh, um, for, for not only 
your emotion, but also, of course, the emotion of the things that are happening in the, uh, in the game. It's, it's just brilliant stuff. So in music, this would be more, what would this do? Like, would you put a drum kit in here somehow? Is that doable or would it just create, yeah. would, would it just be too odd? Well, I'd say because of the, the HRTFs, the, the impulses, they do create a bit of phasing. Mm-hmm. So it's not like this isn't mm-hmm. going to necessarily replace your pan knob in a music mix. I, I probably wouldn't do that. Right. It, it comes, there's a bass right. boost button on there that, like, if you lose any low end, you could put that in and it help, helps out a bit. But it still right. gets, you know, it gets a little phasey. So, okay. so I would use this for, you know, when you're mixing and you want to try to find new places to position things, this is, this is the tool mm-hmm. you can go for. And also when you want to go... Cool. Uh, you get those effects where the sounds start to go outside of the speakers, outside of the, the speaker plane. Like where, where you could really mm-hmm. get those things where you'll be listening to it and you can make it sound like it's coming from another room uh, if, if you're mm-hmm. going for that kind of effect. So yeah, it's really, it's like it's an al- cool alternative to panning, and, and but not necessarily a replacement. Mm-hmm. Got it. Got yeah. it. All right. And so as Brad Pitt once said to Kevin Spacey, what else is in the box? What else is in the box? Anyway, it's in the box. This is a plug-in Alliance plugin, by the way. And and they, there's two versions. This is the pro version. There's also the music version. Mm-hmm. The only difference being is that the oh. music version won't hook up to the 3D goggles, which, you know, face it. it, most people aren't going to use that. And uh, you get mm-hmm. a little bit less in terms of the acoustical uh, environments in the music version. You get like uh, but it could be- uh, about half, right? I think you hurt my head real bad. As we're in the midst of COVID-19 as we do this one, a lot of people yeah. are getting into VR. And, and if you're an audio engineer, sound designer, yeah. this would be a great introductory tool into that space. Absolutely. It's going to crack open. Absolutely. And uh, good find. There was a big push on VR. I, I remember it was like four or five years ago. It was like the yeah. thing. And everybody wanted to learn it. Everybody had to do it. Uh, Ambisonics also is part of that, which is, uh, it's, it's another way of surround recording. Basically there's different orders. You could put speakers that go up and down and you can have, uh, right. a lot of speaker. You could have like 21 speakers that I think an editor can in France, they did something with 21 speakers, but, uh, for mm-hmm. us mortals, I mean, you know, you're probably at, at best <laughs> going to be doing a 5.1 or something. Actually, this thing will link into Dolby Atmos too. I should also mention too. If, if uh, mm-hmm. anyway, it's a great film for games, great film for tool, uh, tool for uh, f- for films, for games, but also for music uh, production. I like it. Yeah. Now, what else is in the box? You say. That's right. What's next? What's in the box? Let's go for another realistic reverb. You know, I had a couple of reverb. Oh, I want to hear shoot this reverb, this reverb, and that. I talked about UHE, mm-hmm. didn't I? Uh, you did. They have a free reverb, so this is a good good one for our free files. The, I got it for free. UHE Protoverb, mm-hmm. and I'm uh, looking for it right now. <laughs> no, that wasn't it. That's not it. <laughs> Here That's we go. There, no? yeah, this is it. UHE Protoverb. And uh, what this does, this is one of those ones I was talking about where it doesn't try to calculate reflections. It tries to calculate resonances. Mm-hmm. And uh, it is, it's this preset you can see says lively room, and it is, it is very lively. Uh, it had to be tamped down a little bit. I think it's, you know, they can get, it can get a bit bright. Uh, and that's actually something I find with a lot with a lot of reverbs. Not to meander too much, but reverbs just generally mm-hmm. do a good job at simulating space. But they they kind of sometimes don't account for the the loss of high end that happens in a in an actual real space. So it, you mm-hmm. can just you can roll off some of the highs. Uh, Air Windows makes a wonderful plugin called Distance, which uh, mm. it was actually it's it's sort of like a low pass filter, but it does it in a different way. He uses kind of strange math, and this is uh, supposed to emulate what happens with sound as it travels through certain distances of air. So you can go like half a mile up to I don't know how many miles. I don't want to change the setting. That's cool. Anyway, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna play Protoverb now on a vocal example. This is a vocal example. I am keeping equidistant from the mic at all times, so as not to induce additional proximity effects. However, I will raise the volume of my voice from time to time, and also get very quiet. All right, so you see there, it's a pretty dynamic vocal track, but I am- It's terrifying. Well, I am running it through a compressor. 
So, so mm. we're not hearing those dynamics. But what you, what you kind of heard there is probably what you normally hear if you just put a reverb on your track. If you're, you're uh, sure. you know, putting a reverb on a vocal or something, and you compress it, you put the reverb on it, and that's great, and it's, it gives you space. But there's a, I, I've always found there's a bit more realism that can actually be attained. So what you want, you know when you're, you're talking to someone in a room, and you don't notice that there's any reverberation in the room, right? You're just zoned in and you're talking. Right. And let's say a loud sound happens. Somebody sneezed really loud or they like clapped their hands really loud. All of a sudden you hear ping, 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 ping. You hear all the stuff coming off the mm -hmm. walls. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. was that just because the room got excited and the reverb got a lot louder? Well, the reverb did get... No, it's a devil. Well, no, the reverb did get it's louder. But it didn't necessarily get that oh. much louder in relation to the space. As anyone who puts mm -hmm. like a microphone up can attest to that, the, re the reverb doesn't seem to change as much as you experienced it. Right. The reason you experience is that is a psychoacoustic effect called the uh, cocktail party effect. Cocktail party mm -hmm. effect is it's, it's like a built-in noise suppression system. Like you were suppressing that mm -hmm. reverb noise because you're focusing on who you were talking to, and uh, mm -hmm. and then when when that, things got loud, that system kind of kicks off for a bit. You start to hear more of. Uh, what's going on around you. The ears open up, right? Something alarming just happened. Mm -hmm. Your attention changes. Uh, it's, it's called the cocktail party effect because imagine, picture yourself at a cocktail party. So you're standing on a stairwell and there's a whole room mm -hmm. full of people and they're all talking to each other. Yap, yap, yap. And they're all re relatively the same volume. Now we have the ability to look at like just two of those people talking. And for whatever reason, we can focus on what they're saying even though they're not necessarily any louder than anyone else because we filter it out. Right. We're not filtering it out with our ears. We're doing it psychoacoustically. With our eyes. And that's, yep. that's the cocktail party effect. So in order to get that when you're mixing and also just to give you your, your, your vocal track a bit more you know, excitement stuff, uh, what you do is don't send the reverb, uh, the compressed track. Send the reverb, the uncompressed track. So we want to go to pre-effects for our send here. And what this, that's going to do is that's going to make the reverb pretty quiet when you're talking quietly. And if you get loud, especially if you get all of a sudden loud, that reverb is going to spring mm -hmm. up. Um, you can hear the difference. This is a vocal example. I am keeping equidistant from the mic at all times so as not to induce additional proximity effects. However, I will raise the volume of my voice from time to time and also get very quiet. See so what it does, it, ex it excites the loud parts and the quiet parts mm -hmm. tend to draw, draw you in, they get more intimate. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's just a great trick. Uh, some people will put like an expander on, on there to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, different ways you can do it, but the, the volume that goes to your reverb doesn't have to have the same volume as what's going out the straight track. Right. Anyway, that's right. my two bits. So, UHG okay. Protoverb, it's uh, it's free, and it's uh, awesome. It's a little uh, oh, okay, never mind. I'm not gonna. Yes, I'm gonna show Protoverb. There it is. Uh, you can save presets, but you can't really dial in the 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 inner workings. That's you got to hit the randomize mm -hmm. button until you get something you like, and then and then save it. That's the <laughs> way they did it. It's for research <laughs> purposes only, that's right? Got it. So, okay. Okay. okay, so that's that's, that's cool. it for me, man. You're talking to me. You're talking to me. I'm the only one here. Well, I'll go on the, let's go, since you went towards the free, let's go towards the, you know, got to pay for these ones. Yeah. Let's pick a couple of, uh, let's pick a couple of interesting <clears throat> sounding um, reverbs here. The first one I'll do, I know a lot of people talk about this one. It's called Ocean Way Studios by Universal Audio. So let's have a little listen here to a drum track with no, uh, I'll take the send out on this drum track. Have a listen. So you're getting a sense there that maybe there's a little bit too much. That bottom end's a little tubby. So maybe we'll take it and just um, cut it down a touch. Yeah, just control that a bit. Let's pop the ocean way on. Let's open up this room here. And this can go in remic mode or reverb mode. Reverb is meant to be used more like a, like a parallel send. 
whereas remix or remic rather would um, try to take your track and process it with microphones so that it sounds according to universal audio like it was recorded in the room but let's have a listen to what kind of effects we can get from this setup and you can have th up to three simultaneous mics at different distances so you see here you can kind of move them around with the um uh with the distance knob a little bit sorry wrong one there we go so they, they like phase out like like real mics one kind of thing I, well i mean we can try it but <clears throat> let's have a listen and see if we like the sound So notice as you take the far mic off, we lose a lot of those room modes that might be sitting closer to that back wall. It's it's very, in that sense, it's very realistic. So again, without. So if we're to pull that back a little bit, we create a really nice sense of natural space around the kit. Without. Oh, that's really nice. And so if we want to, we don't, we're not limited to a drum room. We can try different setups of the big, you know, that big ocean way, apparently classic room. I've never personally been there, but let's have a listen to what it might sound like <clears throat> in a string setup just for fun. Without. And notice, because here the room's a little more square. I don't, know, I don't know if you noticed, but it sounded a little more boxy, maybe a little more like there was some buildup of some ugly, the uglier parts of the sound. But uh, it's a really great sound for placing a single instrument in a room. On a mix, maybe not so much, but um, to, to place a couple of especially acoustic instruments, it's great on piano. It really does sound amazing. But let's not forget good old EMT. Oh, nice. Let's grab a room. All right, let's grab a room preset from here, shall we? Let's talk about a drum room. Now, this is an old vintage, a vintage unit, you know. So right around the time they were making the Exorcist, they were making this box. <laughs> it's Coincidence? One of, the, one of the first digital reverbs, and it's it's it, mm -hmm. it's one of the ones where they got it right. I mean, it still sounds good today, even though they had no processing power, they had no memory compared to today exactly. but they they did it uh, and it still sounds exactly. great let's have a listen without let's kick it in and you can immediately hear phil collins no jacket required <laughs> coming to life in front of you on that kick drum um what else we got let's try a large room and maybe um yeah i think that's probably we're looking for realistic, right? Real sense of space. Let's try a large room and just see what it does for us. Without. Listen to the symbols. Let's try it again. Without. It's, check out the kick. What, check out what it's doing to the kick. That's It's given like a, I know, right? a spatial listen. cue, right? Almost like a low level delay, you can kind of hear it in there. But so that's an oft forgotten, but if you want a vintage vibe, you know, nothing wrong with grabbing a 250. So that's the EMT 250, also by Universal Audio. But listen. If you're not into spending that kind of dough, here's something that's really special that came out on the market maybe six months ago. Oh. It's by Relab. Oh, cool. And it's called the Sonsig. Sons? I never heard of this one. You got to check yeah, it out. This looks right? awesome. So first of all, it'll do some, you know, it'll do some 250 style reverbs. If you go through a really impressive list of presets, by the way, um, it has modulation built in. You can choose different kinds of ensemble voices if you want, but let's play with a room. So let's go down to these presets here. Grab a nice room. Maybe let's try for fun. Let's see how it does small rooms. The mark of a good reverb is how well it does a small room. So let's choose a dark room. 
And as they say in the biz, let's hear it with a, rooms make a record. That's right. That's right. Let's have a listen. This is without. Let's kick it in. A nice compact sense of space with no ring, no nasty artifacts there. Let's grab a medium or a large room. Or, hey, let's do Studio One. Have a listen with. Oh, cool. What I like about this reverb is it's present and bright and punchy. It's in your face. It doesn't sit in the background. So it doesn't apologize for being a reverb. But at the same time, it's clean, it's smooth, and it's really silky. So if you're used to that Lexi sound from the 80s, you're used to that really bright, almost brash, right. um, metallic sound sometimes. And this does a really great job. I mean, even things like large ambience. Let's listen. Without. Now, once you've found a, a vibe that you like, mm -hmm. you can then the parameters you can start playing with are the size of the room independent of the decay time. So you can make the room really, really big, mm -hmm. but keep the time short. Right, right. You hear that? Yeah. The room got so much bigger, oh, yeah. and we can even just really crop the time yeah, down to try and get rid of those nasty tails let's listen it depends what you're mixing they might not necessarily be nasty yep big space without oh damn there goes my loop <laughs> without with We just pull that down in the mix a bit. Without. With. Subtle, gentle. You're not listening to Tales all day. It's not like Hearts, uh, Bad Animals from 1980, whatever, <laughs> with the big, you know, six second snare. This is a really nice, almost envelops the kit in a sense of artificial room. It's lightweight. It's easy to use. It won't crash your CPU. And I think if you get it on sale, it's super cost effective. Just for, uh, just for, for uh, fun. What if you do the reverse? What if you move the size like pretty, sm pretty small? I mean, I'm not saying all the way down. I don't know how, how extreme those knobs are, but, and then, yeah, and then give it more time. What if it goes the other way? Let's take a listen. Without. So yeah, it's just it changes where all of the resonances are, right? Just like it's just like that's what the size function does. But it this is given it's like it gives it's really good at giving you cues, auditory cues. I don't I don't know if it's mm -hmm. like super realistic kind of in that in the sense of you know, I mean an impulse response sounds super realistic until you realize that it's like resonating all over the place, right? You know? Yep. But yep. um Let's listen to the, the non-linear just for fun. <laughs> There's some more Talk Phil. Talk about Billy Don't Lose My Number. <laughs> yeah, some more Phil Collins for you, right? <laughs> the uh, RMX 16 yep. non-lin 2 uh, reverse uh, ramp special, right? <laughs> So there's some cool, I mean, I would use this in a modern mix where a sense of, you know, we've got such great digital, digital resolution. We can hear those spaces now. We can really, um, we can really create atmospheres and rooms and places that don't exist using some of these tools. If you have a nice dry recording, um, so we're not, we're not listening to those big long tails and those mm. compact, almost, they almost sounded mono. Some of them, these are lush, they're dimensional. And they're smooth. A lot of the really cheap reverbs you get out there, mm -hmm. there's some granular artifacts to them that make them harder to really, I don't know, put in a mix in a believable way. Mm. 
That's an interesting. So I was take using it, this. Right? I, I, I have that. Well, I, I know what you're saying. I have another alternative view on that. Is that sometimes the grainy reverbs, because they stick out so much, you don't have to mix them as loud. And sometimes it's something that's yeah, just a little dry, and I don't want to hear a reverb. And you go for the big lush room, and it's like, no, I have to mix it. And and all it really needed was a little splash, like maybe even a, a single delay at the right timing would do it. Or like a reverb that doesn't well, have very much diffusion, right? And it's just you're absolutely you know. right. Here's what we do. I say we do an episode where we take one of these bad boys, a budget but good quality verb, yeah. and we have we have the UAD Lexicon 480. So let's put them uh, head to head. Ooh, that would be a that would be a fun. Uh, yeah, in a mix, in a whole mix, like like doing just what we said. Let's keep it low. And see which one blends it in a way that just makes everything fit. Well, you know, they, they've always said for the complaint, and I just all oh, the plug in reverbs sound great, but they don't blend with the sound. And I, well, it's yeah. well, maybe, yeah, but I mean, I, that's like a probably a factor of converters, or it's, it's certainly not the algorithms because they've something like mm -hmm. the Relab, the 480, it's like the exact algorithm isn't it and certainly there's mm -hmm. other companies like tc took their 6000 and put it in a plug-in and the people still have mm -hmm. that same complaint right and so that's just gotta well, be if, if uh, it's not the inputs the inputs the outputs or the dax it it's the algorithm so you, you've got to be close it is close so I, what i'm saying is you get the yeah. same sound with a little extra something to emulate that DAC or mm -hmm. some distortion or mm -hmm. a bit of saturation or something right like or take a little top end off. That's the other thing, right? Even cables, you lose top end just going through a cable. Like it might be something yeah. that simple. Just take a little top off of it. Yeah, totally. Right. Well, let's do a shootout. Let's uh, let's put it to the test in a real mix. Yeah. Right on. All right, dude. Wow. So top top horror movie from the nineteen seventies. Which one are you going with? Well, it's got to be The Exorcist or Halloween. It's one of those two. I was gonna say the same to Exorcist or Halloween. And did Halloween ruin? the exorcist vibe like it was the first real slasher movie i'm sure that's debatable but it was the first uh, yeah. big slasher yeah movie. Well, it, it set the, it it set the tone for end? the 80s really right did it signal an end because yeah the halloween was all was pretty much except for donald pleasance it was all unknowns yeah am i right that's right they got Whereas him to, the to provide some gravitas to the film which otherwise no you wouldn't have known anyone pretty much so. some authenticity yeah and i'm ever glad he did it because he oh, was amazing yeah. in that movie by the way yeah but then with the exorcist you had what's his name f lee cobb the guy from 12 angry men you had oh, yeah, yeah. uh ellen burston yes like names that's a coppola real, film right Isn't yeah it, real names is it coppola film i'm, I'm, I'm acting exorcist no I'm acting it was, dumb um, now. who was it who directed that? Uh, uh, Friedkin. Okay. William Friedkin. We're going to cut this part out anyway, right? Because we don't get horror stuff around. No, I don't in care. This. <laughs> That's right. That's we don't, right. we just don't, we, don't, we wouldn't, wouldn't like yeah, forget cut out the part where room we 237 or something like that. Like if That's we'd right. never forget That'd something like that, right? That's right. <laughs> we remember most of the lines from The Shining, no. We remember. Yes, we do. I don't want to talk about Tony anymore, Mrs. Torrance. <laughs> Tony's not here. Tony can't wake up. No, Danny's not Dan here. Oh, see? I, yeah. This is not yeah. a good... I didn't, I didn't sleep. Part. Remember, I was in Mexico, right? right? So. This isn't... That's yeah. right. That's right. So. Speaking of which, make sure you watch Three from Hell by Rob Zombie. You want to talk about a Mexico adventure? Oh, don't miss shit, it. Yeah. Yes. Check it out. I have not. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Mixer Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, yeah. see you next time.